Hello everyone, let's just get comfortable, grab a snack, sit down and talk a little bit about complete control today in this little podcast episode. But before getting started, please excuse me if I sound a bit rough today. Um, turns out I'm a little bit ill, uh, not, not, too, not too bad at all, but it seems like my voice takes a crack from time to time. Anyway. And let's talk about complete control, because unfortunately, a lot of you don't seem to know what it actually is, or don't get the grasp of the entirety that complete control actually is. And that is really easy to understand, because it's if you're not new to the topic, then complete control is just a bloating mess of what what is this? What what does it involve? Like, what does it contain? What doesn't it contain? What is it? And let's let's start right there. So you need to understand complete control as an ecosystem because that's more or less what it is. It consists of multiple things. Let's start with the keyboards. That's the most obvious thing. Whenever someone talks about the, the complete control, um, then you get things like the A series or the S series or the M32 or whatever. What are these? So. The first part is the keyboards, and that is the S series, the A series, and the M series. Whereas uh, there's only one M device, which is the M32, and that those started out about I don't I don't know exactly. I think ten years ago, with the Mark One devices, the very first series, and I'm pretty sure that there were only S series at that time. So the S series ranges from, I think. 49 keys over 61 keys to 88 keys something like that there might be one step in between um yeah i think there's a 30 whatever keys version as well what whatever so some three or four different keyboard sizes and those usually don't go up in keys just in keys as that is but also in price obviously now the the not just the keys go up but also the the build quality and some features of the device like most of the knobs and everything are the same but like the s88 is the fully featured all-in-one keyboard that is their ultimate tool and contains like is fully weighted and stuff whereas the lower ones are just half weighted and and more feeling like a keyboard instead of a piano that is the main keyboard series um they are pretty pricey i think that when Mark II was the latest S series, uh, which was the case until two, three, four months ago, that the S88, the top model, ranged about thousand dollars. Now that the Mark III is out, they range about one thousand three hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, so these are these are really pricey, and then they replaced them. Um, with the Mark II S series keyboard, so they improved things basically. And with that, they also decided to release some other keyboards, the A series keyboards, which is a downgraded version of the S series, but much much cheaper. Like I've got an A sixty one. I'm not a professional piano player, and I'm just used to playing keyboards. And for me, the A sixty one is a nice keyboard. It's really like wide. You've got sixty one keys, which is the biggest. Of the A series, I don't think that the A got an 88 version, and it's really cheap compared to the S88 or S61. Is Mark III uh, is probably something about thousand bucks then, probably a bit less, and the A61 uh, would just be 150, something like that. So yeah, it's it's definitely much cheaper. It got less features. It just got a small display, small LED display, whereas the S series keyboard. The Mark III got a really big one. Um, I think it would even got two. So the display is a totally different thing, and we will get to that in a second. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, you got you get additional features, and I don't want and cannot list them all because it's not about the keyboards only here. It's about the entire ecosystem. So if you want to know more about the keyboards, as they are great and they pretty much range uh, from really simple to really complex and from beginners to piano experts, uh, just check them out on the Native Instruments website. Uh, there's a great resource, you will find everything there. 
all in your local reseller, you know? So, and then in addition to the A series keyboards, where the smallest one is uh, 29 keys, I think, they also added an M32, which is a really, really compact keyboard um, that is meant to be taken on travels and everything. And that's the cheapest one for exactly 100 bucks. And that's the one that I was always recommend to beginners. Like, they are definitely better keyboards under 100 bucks. Like, the keyboard is just plastics overall, and the keys can can feel a bit clunky and everything. Um, they, the knobs are pretty loud. Uh, that is what Scott Chesworth um, mentioned. Uh, and he's right. If you are really um, distracted by loud noises while you're composing or while, you, while you're making music, then the keyboard might not be something for you. But that's definitely a question of personal taste. And uh, you should just try for yourself. But Or get to your local music store and just ask them, right? But apart from that... That is the cheapest keyboard that you can get to get a foot into the Complete Control ecosystem. So with that, we now covered the Complete Control M32, the Complete Control A series, and the Complete Control S series, where only the S series has yet um, a new Mark III version. A and M series are still Mark II. Now, that is the keyboard side of things the keyboards that they get by the different instruments. They can be used as a typical MIDI keyboard where the S-Series even got the old, good old MIDI connection in, instead of just USB, which is the case for M and A-Series. But the S-Series also got, in addition to the USB, also a typical MIDI connection, which you can just use to plug it into whichever MIDI-capable interface. That's it. But that's not all. The complete control ecosystem is much more. The complete control ecosystem just say this three times in a row, is an entire software environment, so to speak. And it comes with a plugin that you can load into your DAW or whichever VST compatible, you know, software you like. And that is a, how to put it, a shell, more or less, for other applications for other things that create sound. It can be sampler, for for instance, Contact, which is probably the more world's best and well-known sample player or sampler, just Contact by Native Instruments as well, um, or any other plugin, really. It doesn't matter if it's a fact or if it's something that actually generates sound out of nothing, or MIDI notes, basically. Um, most prominently, obviously, all the native instruments tools. Doesn't matter if it's reactor, if it's battery, if it's contact, all of that just works fine. And how that works is you load up complete control, you load up whichever instrument you want to go inside complete control, and it will just be exposed to you just like you'd use the instrument normally. But now that you've done that, you can use additional features on the complete control keyboards. And that is why it's important to know about the keyboards first, because you can not use those features in a nice and easy way, as you can do with the complete control keyboards, via other keyboards. This is complete control keyboards only. <clears throat> That's where I get to the displays. Now, complete control has a pretty neat interface and a lot of buttons on the keyboards as well. For example, you have transport control buttons on the complete control keyboards which allow you to play and stop and record and loop and tap tempo and everything from the complete control keyboard but those buttons also give you additional features you have got an entire instrument browser on those devices so the main idea behind the complete control keyboards is that you not just want to make music with those by just playing midi notes and do everything else in your DAW but you should be able to just move away from your computer do everything recording and selecting the instruments and, and stuff via the keyboard and only the mixing phase should be done on your PC. That's basically how I understand it at least. So what that involves is that you need an entire browser where you can, via knobs that you also have on a keyboard, you can browse the browser <laughs> of the Complete Control ecosystem, which contains all the instruments that are compatible with Complete Control. 
And those instruments are listed in a very neat way. We can categorize them or they get categorized automatically by the vendor into different sections. For example, you can decide if you want to load an instrument, um, a one shot or a loop, for example, and you can then further decide if you want to load from a specific product or from a specific vendor or from a specific type. Like if you're searching for brass instruments only, then you just filter down by brass instruments and then you can filter by trumpet and then you would go only to trumpets, right? And then in the end, you've got patches. A patch is just an instrument with a specific configuration that has a specific sound to it and a library, for example, uh, I don't know, hybrid keys by uh, native instruments can contain multiple hundred of patches if they want to. And then typically what you get is not just a patch, but also a preview sound. So you don't need to load the patch and play it. You can just scroll through with a dial, with an encoder, which is a four dimensional encoder. You can press it, you can tilt it and you can turn it. You can tilt it up, down, left, right, and you can turn it and you can press it, right? That's, that's the entire idea. And by turning it, you snap through the presets and you get spoke you get spoken feedback by the way that's accessibility wise you get accessibility with that and you get a patch like a sound a preview for that patch so that you don't need to load it and everything you know that can take some time depending on the size of the instrument so you will get a spoken feedback and you will get a sound so that you don't need to load it and you can just flick through and see if that's the sound that you're looking for so it's really simple to do that and it's only accessible with a keyboard now as i said all of that is accessible. And in addition to that, if you now found a sound that you really, really liked, then you can just load it by pressing the link holder down. You would just load it into the slot that might take a time or not. And then you've got eight knobs for every keyboard and you've got additional buttons for the S series, which allow you to control parameters which are configured on those instruments. And you will get spoken feedback as well, not just about the state of the parameter right now, but also about the name of the parameter. So best volume is the uh, best, best example would be a volume or expression, depending on the wording, uh, which would just be the volume of the instrument, right? So imagine it loads at 100%, you touch the knob, it's touch sensitive, you would get feedback from your computer, which automatically says volume, and then you just turn it right or left, let's say left and then it turns down the volume and you can configure it the way you like and depending on the vendor of the product and the complete control uh, settings you've got different parameters sometimes multiple pages like I, can, I think up to eight pages with eight parameters each which would be 64 parameters can be wrong about that so yeah that's that's definitely something that is really 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 useful now, that is the ecosystem. Um, there are some things that need to be said, though. The ecosystem isn't open. Usually, or most of the people need to pay something to get into the ecosystem, which means that it's obviously not free. But people found a way to create NKS snapshots. And that is something that you might hear really quickly if you try to dive into the ecosystem. NKS. <laughs> um, that is the standard by Complete Control, by Native Instruments for the complete control snapshots. So in theory, and if you've got the knowledge, then also in practice, you can create NKS snapshots for every instrument, virtual instrument, obviously, and every effect there is out there. Um, because let's, I don't want to do, because if I do this, then we could fill an entire like, 90 minutes with it, but you can also add effects that way via complete control only to the instruments within complete control. So you could, for example, create NKS snapshots for any equalizer out there and you could just tune your sound even through the mixing phase if you wanted to on your keyboard. Um, but there, there are some people, especially on the Native Instruments forum, who do this frequently like you ask them hey there's a new plugin out there it might be free it might not be could you just create nks snapshots for complete control and they sometimes do and sometimes they won't even get paid for it and this is great because the community is kind of supportive and, and doing their thing uh, but not all of the paid products from from developers and vendors who are not comfortable with the native instruments environment that not all of them provide 
MKS snapshots. So a complete control isn't a drop-in replacement for any other effect that you run in your DAW, it's just an additional thing. Um, you might still in the end need to use an effect which doesn't have MKS snapshots and thus does not run in complete control. And now, with that being said, um, back to the accessibility, there are some differences between the keyboards when it comes to accessibility. Because reasons. So the M and the A series are totally identical in accessibility terms. So you get spoken feedback, spoken feedback for any key that you press on the keyboard. You get spoken feedback for the menu, so for the browser and uh, for the arpeggio and keys and scale settings and everything. The S series, however, has a bigger screen and thus allows you to view more on that screen, which is their main reason why they add a bit more configurability to the S series browser. Like you got two, one or two more settings, one or two more filter categories on the S series keyboards because they've got a bigger screen and you can display more uh, on that screen, right? We're asking them to change that uh, for quite a while by now, but obviously accessibility goes the other way around as well. Like, why should we get additional things if sighted people can't see it? So, yeah, that's that's how how it is, right? Um, yeah, uh, it, it doesn't like you need to know that the S series got more settings in the browser and more buttons, obviously, where you can toggle more things. But apart from that, I've never used an S series keyboard before, and I'm totally fine with M and A series. That's just important to know. Um, it's something to to keep in mind, if you want a full package, then just get an S-series keyboard. Maybe the smallest that you can get, uh, depending on how good you are as a piano player. If you're really expert, then probably get the 88 fully weighted one. Um, yeah, as I said, go to the Native Instruments website and just inform yourself about what's going on in the in the business. Apart from that. All of that works under Windows and Mac and independent from the DAW that you're using. So it works under Logic, it works under, don't know, Samplitude, probably Reaper, Ableton Live, now that the public beta is out. Um, everything works, it's just, just flawlessly. Sometimes you need additional helpers, like Reaper requires you to install the Re control driver to add some features which other DAWs have natively. But apart from that, it just works, and that's great. And one additional thing that you need to know about the ecosystem. Now you ask yourself, where do you get these instruments and plugins and everything that are native instruments and in case compatible? And that is the complete bundles. Like native instruments themselves has a big palette of different instruments and, and, and sample libraries and whatever on their website. And they are really, 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 really pricey. But unfortunately, or fortunately, actually, not unfortunately, Native Instruments also got a collection which is called Complete, without control. <laughs> and um, in multiple stages, you start at Select, then you get to Start, then you get to Ultimate, I think, and then you get to Ultimate Collector's Edition, or we, we shorten it by UCE. UCE is um, the biggest one. And those collections get updated every two years, you get new libraries in between as well, but those haven't been added to the collection yet, most of the time. And for for right now, for example, it's complete uh, 14. And those stages contain different libraries at different prices. For example, complete select is the package that you get with every complete control keyboard that you buy. So if you decide to buy an M32, then you will automatically get a serial number which registers you to get complete select, which contains like 30 instruments or something like that. Um, 40 gigabytes of sounds, uh, something like that. Don't, don't quote me on that. So a lot of stuff to play around with and get used to the NKS and complete control interface. The next step would be complete starter or the other way around. I, I don't know, just don't quote me on that. The highest two ones are ultimate and ultimate collector station. I always mess up some selected starters. Um, where you have to pay an upgrade price if you already have the, the smaller version, obviously. 
And then you can get Ultimate and Ultimate Collector's Edition. And Ultimate Collector's Edition is really pricey. It's about a thousand bucks, a bit more, I think. Um, but the great news is that every summer, Native Instruments hosts their Summer of Sound, which is a 50% off discount for over two months, I think, uh, to all their collections, um, Ultimate Collector's Editions, everything. And in Black Friday, they typically do the same thing. And they even give a discount on the keyboards at Black Friday, which is right now, by the way, at the time of releasing this video. So that is definitely wait. Uh, yeah, okay. I, this format is uncut, right? But this is really loud. Anyway, um, you you might want to wait for this if you want to get one of the keyboards. Mm, not probably not that, but if you want to get the software and the instrument package and everything, then uh, yeah, just just wait. And no, Native Instruments is obviously not the only source. Like there are a lot of developers which are not included in Complete. God, Complete is just Native Instruments stuff, right? Um, there are a lot of developers out there who provide NK snapshots. Spitfire Audio, for example, they've got a compatibility page where you can list all their libraries together with of the NKS ready or not. Uh, Cine samples. I, you know, I'm mainly in the, in the orchestra business, so I know all of that. Uh, stress of sampling. Um, orchestra tools got a lot of NKS ready stuff. Um, yeah, there, there a lot more are NKS ready. So not ju just because they are not native instruments doesn't mean that they are not NKS ready, but it doesn't hurt to search the web page of the product carefully if you want to have NKS support or ask the vendors directly if they are NKS ready or not. Yeah, so that's more or less a wrap up of what complete control and complete and the ecosystem and, and everything is all about. Now, one final thing the accessibility stops at the hardware. Um, that's one thing that, that you, in my eyes, need to know. Native Instruments is one of the companies who are proud of the accessibility and have been since they've initially released it. But they always have been a roadblock sometimes. Like, they're pretty happy with what they have, and sometimes it feels like they are not really open to adding new things. Like we're talking about accessibility in software for, for everyone who doesn't have a keyboard. We've been talking about this, that for years. Like every sighted person, even without a keyboard, can load up the Complete Control plugin and can still use all the features that are available on the keyboard with a mouse. Right, you can just scroll through patches and get spoken, uh, get get the previews and everything, even without the keyboard. That's possible for sighted people. It's not possible for us because the software isn't accessible. Um, they never really responded to improving accessibility. If something of that regard happened, then it was by accident, um, like with the newest Contact Seven Seven version. I might or might not have a video out on that already. Um, so they. They, I don't know what the problem and the issue actually is. There are some people in there who are really open from the ideas of improving things, but it doesn't happen for one reason or another. And uh, so hardware-wise, the keyboards are actually pretty fine, except that at the time of uploading this video, you should not get an MK3 keyboard because they are not yet accessible. Accessibility will be there next year early next year hopefully but it will happen um their machine mk3 is accessible but also not all of them the smaller version the machine micro isn't and um yeah so they they oh, they're always pretty proud of how accessible they are and granted that is definitely neat i really like the complete control ecosystem but it's also worth mentioning that they don't commit fully into accessibility because otherwise they would just care about software as well and they don't, at least not yet. Maybe they were with version 8 of Contact and version 4 of Complete Control. I personally don't think that they will, but yeah, time will tell, I guess. But that's definitely something that you need to know or should know um, because that means that apart from the keyboard, if you if you can't take the keyboard with you, then complete control is more or less out of reach. Um, 
You can load contact patches if you've got the right contact version or helping tools. And complete control is more or less inaccessible. Like you can control parameters via your door, obviously. Uh, but you cannot load different patches and stuff. That's only possible with a keyboard. And if you are a person who travels much and you can only take your laptop with you and have no room for keyboard, then complete control is probably not the way to go because accessibility for software is not going to happen too soon. So yeah, that's, that's worth mentioning. That should be it, I think. Mm, let's just... Let me just think about it. No, I think that's all we need to discuss for now. If there's something else that I just missed here, then I will probably just make another podcast about it. And yeah, that, that's that's been it. That's been quite a while. Um, my voice is actually pretty tired by now. Yeah, can definitely feel that I'm not at the top of my game right now. Anyway, I wanted to put it out there just in case you want to listen to someone who just talks to you all about the really price ecosystem of complete control. And if you do and enjoyed it, then like this video and subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of more things to come in the future. Anyway, thanks for listening. And until the next regular video, I hope or next podcast, whatever it would be, I uh, thank you for listening. And until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>